filming a vlog with a mug in my hand. I have never felt more like a British YouTuber than this moment. Hey guys, and welcome to my new series, Depresso! This is the big series project I was talking to you about last video. It's a series where I'm going to be talking about depression whilst drinking coffee, hence Depresso. The only issue is, I don't like coffee. Hmm. So instead, every episode I'm going to be drinking a different hot beverage, just for, you know, the gimmick. So today it's standard red label tea because I'm British and boring. One sugar, that's how you do it. So yeah, I guess today is the big reveal. I have depression! And I figured I can't really start a series on YouTube talking about depression without telling you guys my depression story, because otherwise it might come across that I don't actually know what I'm talking about, when trust me, I do. I've been through it. I know what I'm talking about. And talking about mental health, especially online, is really important. I'm basically trying to make the sort of video series I would have liked to see before I started getting treatment for my depression. So here goes, I guess. When I was about nine years old, I started to notice that my self-esteem was lower than a lot of people around me. Loads of my family members would tell me, why can't you just take a compliment? Like someone would say, oh, you look pretty today. And I'd be like, no, 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 I don't. <laughs> A lot of my self-esteem issues when I was younger focused around how I looked and that got progressively worse as I got older. And for me, I kind of mark that as the beginning of my experience of depression. These low self-esteem things built up slowly as I went through high school and moved from just being about my physical appearance to also being about my personality and other things about me. And so that's when the big sad started. For myself, I tend to mark my like full on depression as starting in about year 10. So I was 14, nearly 15 when it started getting really bad. The effects that I'd most commonly experience would be a lack of motivation, anxiety and paranoia, especially about my social relationships and occasionally suicidal thoughts. At this time I really didn't want to seek help because I thought I was overreacting and that no one would believe me if I told them that I had depression. And so I generally referred to all of the things I was feeling as my grey days. Basically anytime I was experiencing low mood due to depression, it was like all the colour in the world was dimmed. Everything I looked at was greyer than usual. I didn't enjoy the things that I enjoyed as much, and the things that made me sad made me even more sad. When I wasn't seeking any medical help and I hadn't told my parents or anything, I had some really supportive friends around me. People would often say to me that I needed to talk to someone, a professional, or even just my parents about this, but I was just too nervous. There's this whole stigma around depression that basically, if you haven't experienced it before, then a lot of people think that it's just like being really sad. Which, yes, that does happen. You do get periods of low mood where you might just like look at a cute dog and then cry. But a lot of the time, it's also just feeling nothing. And that's so hard to explain to people who haven't gone through it. And that was the biggest worry for me in seeking help is that people weren't gonna understand. And then around my GCSEs, things got like really bad. It was not a good time for me. And I did self-harm in that time. The danger with self-harm is that it can become a habit, it can become addictive, and luckily I did not fall into that pattern. But I did self-harm and I'm not proud of it, but it's a thing that happened and people need to know about it. One day in year 12, I was in English Lit class and I was having a really bad day. I went into class and my teacher had set a timed essay, which I was expecting, but I was already feeling bad and then I saw the question and it was near impossible. Like even if I'd have been in my best mood I really wouldn't have been able to write anything good for this question. And I just sat there and cried and my English teacher had to take me out of the class. I didn't really tell her much, I just kind of said that I was stressed with schoolwork and stuff. I thought that was the end of it. I didn't know at the time that she passed this on to my form tutor. When I was back home I had a job that I worked every Saturday and my shift was 8 till 4. So I had to be up pretty early on a Saturday morning and I just woke up and just I couldn't see myself facing the day. I felt like I just needed to lay in bed and do nothing because otherwise I was gonna break down. So I was getting ready for work and I just I just couldn't deal with it. So I went downstairs and said to my mum, I can't go to work today, I just can't do it. I'm so stressed with school and just started on that whole school homework sort of line that I tended to go for. That was my usual cover up because it was just the easiest thing to go for. I was in a high pressure situation at school. I was expected to get really good grades. And so obviously that did actually contribute to part of my mental health problems, but it wasn't the root cause. And so my mum said, no, you can't skip a day of work because you've got homework to do, which was fair and I completely understand. But at that point I did just break down and basically I told her everything. Yeah, it was, it was a mess. 
I, I don't like to think of that day, but you know, it needed to happen. So I called in sick to work and I took the day off and I really needed that day to recuperate and I'm glad I did it. My mum just sort of told me to go back to bed and I did and a couple of hours later she came upstairs and said that she'd done some research on depression and had booked me a doctor's appointment for the Monday. I didn't actually seek out medical help, my mum did it for me, but she did the thing that I was never going to do and I'm really grateful for her doing that. So I went back to school on Monday and I had a talk with my form tutor. We sorted some stuff out, got me some support in school. When I went to the doctors, they told me that the best thing to do to start with was to try out counselling at my school. And so I did that. It was terrible, but if you are offered something like that, take it because it's better than nothing. The National Health Service is great, but it's kind of terrible when it comes to mental health stuff. So if you've got a placeholder like a school counsellor, use it. I went back to the doctors because the counselling alone wasn't really helping. So I got put on antidepressants. I started off on citalopram on 10 milligrams, which is the lowest dose. As I was taking those and I wasn't really feeling the effects of them. At the same time, I was battling with the NHS to try and get some better counselling and these pills just weren't working. I upped my dose twice and they just weren't doing anything for me. And so I went back to the doctors and was like, look, I need something else. Luckily, the doctor I saw was a depression specialist and he put me on sertraline, which is specialized for young people. Let me just tell you, that suits me so much better. At around the same time, I got put on a counseling system that worked really well for me. It was called behavioral activation and basically it just like teaches you to manage your time so that you're doing things you have to do, things you want to do, and things you should do. Because the thing with depression is it not only takes away your motivation to do your schoolwork, but it also takes away your motivation to play guitar or play video games or see friends. And those are things I needed to do to make me happy. And this is where I am now. I've been on sertraline for I think nearly a year now, possibly over a year, and it's working really well for me. I passed my behavioral activation counseling and I've taken those skills with me. At uni I've got a counselor and I'm signed up to the Disabled Student Support Service and I am about a year and nine months clean from self-harm. So I hope this was a good introduction to this series. I know my depression story is a bit like insane, but I needed to talk about it. I can't start a series about depression without telling you my experience of depression. It feels nice to open up on this channel for once. I've never really spoken about anything super, super personal. I think this is a good step for my channel and for me personally, and hopefully it will help some people out there. Like I said, this is the series that I would have loved to have seen when I was in year 10 or 11, not getting any medical help and just trying to battle through things on my own and with the support of my friends. It's just nice to know that you're not alone and that you're not the only person feeling the things that you're feeling. At the moment I've got three more episodes planned for this series but hopefully I'll be able to come up with some more topics and if there's anything you want to hear me talk about just leave it in the comments and I'll happily try and plan a video around it. I just really want to do something positive and helpful on this platform so I thought this was the best way to do it, even if the title is a terrible pun. Thanks for watching, tell me what you thought in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye!